This is ESPN on ABC. Welcome, everyone, to St. Petersburg, Florida, where Major League Baseball postseason is about to get underway. Inside Tropicana Field in the first of four games today, the Tampa Bay Rays play host to the Texas Rangers. And the eight teams playing in this round better be ready to go. It took more than six months to get here, but in these best of three series, the season can be over in the blink of an eye. The time for improving is over. The time for proving has arrived. Because the future hangs by a thread. It's gone! The Rangers and the Rays are ready. 162 games have prepared them for this moment. The Rangers will play in October. A moment with no before, only an after. Filled with promise or regret. That moment is here. Now is all they got. Miss your shot. Corey Seager had an MVP caliber regular season to lead the Rangers to the playoffs for the first time since 2016. Well, Randy Arozarena and the Rays have become fixtures in the postseason, and he is a well-established clutch performer in the playoffs. The winner of this series will advance the division series to take on the number one seed in the American League, the Baltimore Orioles. Later this afternoon, the Twins and the Blue Jays get their series started. The winner will advance to take on the Houston Astros. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough, along with Tim Kirkchen and Jessica Mendoza. Delighted to have you with us as the best part of the baseball season is about to begin. And Jess, the Rays used to playing in this part of the season. 99 wins as they're in the postseason for the fifth year in a row, and perhaps their proudest achievement given all of the adversity that they had to deal with this season. Sean, the year's been crazy. I mean, they start at 13-0, the best record tied with any team in baseball, and then the injuries come. You think about how many different players they've had to use 58 37 different pitchers three-fifths of the rotation gone including two Cy Young candidates their best position player by war Wander Franco and when you talk to this team it has been depth in their bullpen depth in their lineup talking to Kevin Cash it's not about one through nine it's about nine through 35 and that's what got him here yeah and ordinarily 99 wins keeps you out of the wild card round but the Baltimore Orioles won the East by two games meanwhile the Texas Rangers Tim 68 <laughs> wins a year ago that number went to 90 but you wonder about their mindset getting here I think they thought for a lot of this season that they weren't going to have to play in this round they were in first place for 160 days and then they lost on Sunday in Seattle so then they had to fly five and a half hours to play a wild card series they are the streakiest team in baseball Mitch Garver their DH told me for three months we were the best team on the face of the earth and then the next month we were maybe the worst Bruce Bochy who's seen everything told me I've never seen anything like this but they're a great offensive team and when they are right they are dangerous. Adolis Garcia and the Rangers ready to square off with Randy Arozarena and the Rays in a heavyweight battle. H had a chance to celebrate regular season success now it's time to get back to work with bigger goals in mind. The first pitch coming up next after this from our ABC stations. We're back in St. Petersburg, Florida. This wild card series about to begin between the two highest scoring teams in the American League during the regular season. Corey Seager highlights the Rangers lineup. He'll hit second. After a 33 home run regular season, he hit 327, second in the American League behind Yandy Diaz of the Rangers. Simeon leads off, led the American League in hits and runs scored. They'll face Tyler Glass now, the big right hander, ready to go, and his first pitch is hit in the air in shallow left. Randy Arozarena 
makes the catch. One pitch and one out for Tyler Glasnow, the 30-year-old right-hander from New Hall, California, and a very talented starting pitcher. And the key is his curveball. The league hit 095 off his curveball. When he is landing that and then throwing 98 with a four-seamer up and slider away, he is impossible to hit. Ten wins, a career high, largely because he's been plagued by injuries, as he was again this season. Limited to 21 starts, he threw ball one to Seager. And a swing and a miss with a pitch in the dirt. That's his slider, 91 miles an hour. You mentioned it, Tim, he'll get that fastball about 98. Swing and a miss. And Seager. Behind in the count, one and two. He actually had a very slight lead in the batting race going into Sunday's regular season finale, but he went 0 for 4. Pitch in the dirt and lost the batting title in the American League to Yandy Diaz, who did not play in the Rays finale on Sunday, given that their position in the standings was already long secure. And Rene Pinto made the block there. He's starting this game because he's their best defensive catcher and one of the best framers in the game. And the pitch hit hard off the glove of the first baseman, Diaz. He throws the glass now, and it's off his glove and into foul territory. And Seager is safe. It was a hot smash by Corey Seager. But a ball you would think Yandy Diaz believes he should have been able to play. Yeah, this is a ball that Yandy Diaz absolutely, it's 89 miles an hour off the bat. Now, I get it. If it's 100, it's smoked. It's not an easy play, but it's a play that Yandy needs to make. And a bad throw to the pitcher covering the bag. This is a double play by Yandy Diaz. Goes as an error. Texas, the better defensive team of these two. Bruce Bochy said that's the one area where the Rangers have really been consistent all season long in the field. So Seeger held on and strike one taken by Robbie Grossman. And again, he's got one of the most athletic pitchers in the game go over to cover the bag and he just leads him too much on that. Should have been an out one way or another. Off speed pitch and a dandy. Grossman the designated hitter. Only hit third in six games in the regular season. Those were all in the month of September. And he fared well in that role. Hit two homers, walked nine times. Daniel Lowe had been their number three hitter most of the year, but he slumped down the stretch, and he's hitting fifth this afternoon. The 0-2 pitch is chopped behind home plate. And Grossman just crushes left-handed pitching, so he hits third against lefties, but they kept him in third against the right-hander. They actually considered Evan Carter moving up to third, but they thought he's under enough pressure at 21 years old playing <laughs> in his first playoff game. Grossman, a switch hitter, hit 238 overall. And the pitch is another foul. Four slider in this at bat. You see how dirty it is, not just the mile per hour, but the late bite. Grossman just getting a piece, and Grossman's a high contact guy, so he's able to strike barely get a piece of the slider. The opponents hit just 209 against Glass now this season. And the fastball's high. As no Kevin usage. Cash told us today, Jess, when he throws that fastball, it's almost always high. Yep, 97 miles an hour. You see 44% with that slider. Leans on it a ton, and it's that curveball. It's been the best pitch, especially to lefties. One out, a runner at first, just underway. And that fastball's high. Check swing, the appeal down to third. Adrian Johnson, the umpire there, said no swing. Carlos Torres is the home plate umpire. And Torres is very much a hitter's umpire. He rarely goes out of the strike zone and doesn't call the ball up for a strike very often. Seven pitch and he hit bad. He tried to check the swing and could not. 
First strikeout of the afternoon for Glass. Now let's welcome in Coley Harvey down on the field. Good afternoon, Sean. You guys were talking in the open about the journey the Texas Rangers have taken to get to this postseason. Well, here's how they got to Tampa Bay. It was after that loss in Seoul on Sunday when they took a five and a half hour flight to get here. They landed just after 1 a.m. On, uh, on yesterday morning. Because of that, they did not end up taking their formal workout here inside Travicana Field, and they decided to take the rest instead of get the work in. Their manager, Bruce Bochy, he's been in the postseason a lot. Three World Series wins for him as a manager, but this friend franchise hasn't been in this spot since 2016 the Rays on the other hand of course five straight playoff appearances and when I asked Tyler Glasnow the starter going right now about the added advantage of playing in the postseason so many years in a row he said it puts us in a routine we know exactly what to expect and uh, he did also add baseball's baseball this time of year anything can happen Goldie's Garcia is the hitter and he's behind in the count one and two he had 39 homers in the regular season Second in the American League behind Shohei Otani. Already five swings and misses from Texas batters against Glass now. His one two pitch is a little bit low and away. Bruce Bochy admitted the Rangers were disappointed with the way the regular season ended. Had they won Sunday in Seattle, they would have won the division. He said as they flew over Dallas yesterday, he was wishing they could have landed for some rest and get ready to start in the next round. But he said this is the postseason. You know, one round on the field today, the disappointment's over with, and here we go. Yeah, he flew over Dallas and said, oh, and then you could fill in the blank. Right. Eighteenth pitch of the inning upcoming from Glasnow. And it's a swing and a miss. He tried to check it. Rangers having trouble with those pitches in the dirt. Two strikeouts in the inning for Glasnow. Yandy Diaz will lead off for the Tampa Bay Rays. He won the batting title, the first Tampa Bay player to win it. Followed by Rosa Reina. Ramirez, who finished very hot at the end of the regular season, Paredes hit 31 home runs. And the lineup gets a little light near the bottom. They do welcome back Jose Siri, who hasn't played since September 11th. He suffered a fractured hand when he got hit by a pitch. They'll face Jordan Montgomery. Well, as Bruce Bochy said, it was a real shot in the arm for the Rangers when he came over from the St. Louis Cardinals at the trade deadline. As you can see, he was a much better pitcher in Arlington than he was in St. Louis. And his last four starts, 27 innings, two earned runs. A bunch of the Rangers told me this is the best he's ever thrown in his career right now. Facing the batting champ, Diaz, who slices a foul over by the first base dugout. And... Nathaniel Lowe couldn't get there. Do you have any problem with Diaz not playing on the last day when he and Seager were <laughs> neck and neck for the batting title? Well, no one's going to compare him to Ted Williams in 1941. We understand, but it's okay. It was a meaningless game for them. He needs to rest for the playoffs. And he did battle a leg injury late in the regular season. Montgomery, a 30-year-old veteran, big guy like Glass now. He's 6'6", 240 pounds. He missed Lowe. And his best pitch is his sinker. And now he's starting to use his sinker up in the strike zone, which doesn't seem to make sense, but it's really worked. He's going up and up and up. And he bounces one off the plate. He's got a good sinker, but his best pitches to me have been the curveball, the changeup, especially against right handed batters. You see that five pitch mix, barely uses the cutter, the four seam occasionally, but I circle that changeup and that curveball dirty against righties. High fly ball and right. It can be difficult to find the ball against the backdrop here, but Garcia has it one out. There's a guy who hits his name, Randy Rosarena. Every time he takes a swing, it is a thing. It's Cosa Buena. Running around the bases, he's as fast as a hyena. Ah, oh, Rosarena. Aye. There's a guy who hits his name, Randy Rosarena. Every time he takes a swing, it is a thing. It's Cosa Buena. Running around the bases, he's as fast as a hyena. Ah, oh, Rosarena. Aye. 
Sean, how much money can I give you to do that? <laughs> None. I'm wondering if Jeff Pass is happy we played that or not. <laughs> That's our primary information guy singing like that. Good thing oh, he's an information so good. guy. <laughs> Broadway is not in his future. Here is a Rosa Rain, as we said at the outset, clutch postseason performer during this Rays run. And he smokes one up the middle of the base hit right over the head of Montgomery. Tampa Bay team can be so good. This is a pitcher's pitch. I mean, Timmy, you talked about it. That's a good sinker. Low and away. Watch a Rosa Buena go down with his legs and finish through. Simple swing. When you're in VP, that's all you're trying to do. Hit the back of the cage. He does it there. So he's aboard for Harold Ramirez. Their designated hitter. Keep and him. he takes a knee-high strike. And keep in mind, Rosa Reza can run here, and Montgomery this year, 14 steals, only one caught stealing. It's a lot easier to steal a base this year. He's had a little trouble with stolen bases this year. Well, off the end of the bat and chopped to short. And safe at first is Ramirez. Looked like... They'd be able to turn that double play, but Seeger and Simeon didn't get it over to Nate Lowe in time. Well, Marcus Simeon has had a tremendous defensive season. He hasn't made an error in 72 games. I don't think they had a chance there because just the first hop was too big to Corey Seeger to get to. Now Isak Paredes, who socked 31 home runs in the regular season. He takes a breaking ball that just missed. Montgomery throws straight over the top, which is very rare for a left-handed pitcher. Robbie Grossman, his teammate, told me, I'm telling you, I've seen guys swing in the bat before the ball leaves his hand. That's how deceptive he is. Wow. Generous strikes on there and a pitch to tail the way. Paredes didn't like it. Should he? He finished eighth in the American League in home runs in the regular season. All of them pulled. And he pulls that one down the left field line and a diving catch made by Evan Carter. Sean, this is the most underrated part about the Rangers. Their defense, especially in the outfield. Evan Carter, 21 years old, makes that play. Just barely turned 21. We'll return with Rangers and Rays after this from our ABC station. So as Bruce Bochy told us before the game, he's never been involved in a season that had so many ebbs and flows. The Rangers took the lead in their division early in the season, stayed in first place until late August. Class now threw a ball low to Nathaniel Lowe. Lots of up and downs, but it looked like they were recovered enough to win the division. Went to Seattle off three out of four to shut out by George Kirby on Sunday. Finished tied with the Houston Astros at 90 and 72, but the Astros won nine out of 13 head to head in the regular season. So they are the division champs for the third year in a row. Low took ball two, two and one. Bochi told me that Lowe has stupid power. He said he hits the ball farther than anyone on our team, and it's not even close. He says if he ever figures it out. He also has a very good eye. Walked 93 times. Second in the American League. The Rangers led the league in walks by a wide margin. That's what they do. They walk and hit it out of the ballpark. And that's a line drive and a base hit into center field. That is the first hit for the Texas Rangers from Lowe, who had a little bit of a tough time in September. This is what this Texas team is going to have to do. Hit high velocity fastballs up in the zone. Glass now is a really good job of hitting that spot. Texas has struggled this season with that area. 
Nathaniel Lowe doing a nice job there to get on base. And the batter is Jonah Hine, all-star catcher in the American League. He took a strike on the outside corner. Had a career year. Marcus Simeon told me the way to hit glass now, you have to swing at his fastball, and you have to try not to swing at his breaking balls. Hine laid off that one of the dirt. Of pitch his teammates were chasing in the first inning. He was the starting catcher for the American League in the All-Star game. He slices one foul and out of play. Another guy who missed some time. Played in 131 games. They had some injuries during that swoon late in the year. And he drove in 95 runs. Pudge Rodriguez is the only Ranger catcher ever to drive in more runs in a season than Jonah Heim did this year. One ball and two strikes. And a swing and a miss. And a pitch up and away. Three strikeouts already for Glass now. This postseason get the best 5G coverage in the game with T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. It is well below a capacity crowd. Of course, the Rays, even with the successes, haven't drawn very well. And it is a weekday afternoon. People at work, at least plausibly. And I was going to say in school, but we saw some youngsters who looked like they might have cut out a little early today to be here. This is school. Teach him up. Leone Tavares. And up there with a count of one ball and one strike. Yeah, he made a change swing in September. He shortened his swing. He shortened his follow through at 299 in the month of September after a real struggle in August. Seeing his first postseason action. Hit hard past the first baseman Diaz and down the right field line. Played by Manuel Margot. On to third is low. And the Rangers have something brewing here with runners at the corners. And one out in a scoreless game in the second. You see Yandy Diaz doesn't exactly get off the bag in a quick amount of time here. Otherwise, that is a catchable ball. Here's Josh Young. And he takes a strike over the outer third. It was fun talking to Josh before the game because his approach is like, I'm going to be like a softball player. I'm looking for the rise ball because Glass now hits that fastball. We talk about it all the time. It looks almost like the ball is rising. He's like, I'm looking for the top half. The runner goes from first. He'll have to get back fast. Margot the catch. That should be deep enough to score the run. Tavares did get back to first and across the plate with the first run of this postseason. Nathaniel Lowe on an RBI on a sacrifice fly by the 25-year-old rookie, Josh Young, seeing his first career postseason action. He has had a very good rookie year, and this is where Bruce Bochy is so good. He put him in the number five spot as a rookie this year and said, go ahead, you're going to change the whole lineup, and he has. He had a very productive season as a rookie. And a fastball almost drifted away from Pinto. Here's Evan Carter. <laughs> Evan Carter, Robbie Grossman told me, is the most disciplined 21-year hitter I have ever seen. His nickname in the minor leagues was Full Count. He has made 75 plate appearances in the big leagues this year, and he's gone to a full count 20 times. That's it's remarkable. unbelievable to have this kind of plate discipline and understanding of the strike zone at age 21. Wasn't even in the big leagues. A month ago, the throw goes into center field, and on to third goes Tavares, and he slides in ahead of the throw from Siri. And really no surprise here, Glass now this year, 19 stolen bases, one caught stealing. So look for the Rangers to run, Tavares who can run, took off here, and even with a good throw, I don't think there's any chance they get him, and he ends up at third with two outs. And already the defensive advantage for Texas in evidence here Diaz had a couple of tough moments in these first two innings and now Pinto 
the throwing error for Kevin Cash. And Tavares the stolen base and then third on the throw. So one nothing Rangers and now Carter who made his major league debut on September 8th. Pops one out of the play to the left. Small sample but he had a 1.058 OPS as a rookie. It's just remarkable how understanding this guy is of how the game's played at such a young age. Played in 23 major league games, hit 306 with five homers. Played very good defense. We've already seen that this afternoon. Fastball low. Glass now wanted the call, but it certainly looked to be low. Great reads in left field. That's what we saw to end the last inning. And he's the fastest runner on the team. Bright future for this kid. I think we like him. <laughs> Swing and a miss. A slider down and in. He's the second youngest player to appear in the postseason in Rangers history. Just 21 years and 10 days old. Only Jerks and Profar was younger back in 2012. Full count. <laughs> yep, right on cue. Bernie had nickname. He takes ball four. Carter just got called up because they had some injuries. Garcia needed to go down for a few days and I don't think the plan was to have Carter this involved but once he got the opportunity he ran with it right and he's a center fielder and they put him in left field and he's played tremendously in left field it is not easy to be a regular center fielder move to a corner outfield and be that good chatting with Corey Ragsdale the first base coach Tony Beasley coaches third for Texas Coming up, 4.30 Eastern time, about an hour away for George Springer. With 19 career postseason home runs, fifth most of all time, and the Blue Jays in Minneapolis to take on the Twins. Michael Kay, Alex Rodriguez, and Nolan Garcia ready to call that one for you. Here's Marcus Simeon. And he takes a strike right down the middle, just above the knees. He led the league in hits and runs. He was one of four players to play all 162 games. He knocked in 100 runs. Great year for Simeon. The runner takes off from first, and Carter will steal second without a throw. And he's got numbers off glass now. Four for nine, two career homers. It's a chopper in the hole. To an excellent glove man wall from the one hop throws on time. I think Diaz, a little out of sorts here early. He lost track of the outs. He almost threw the ball to home plate, even though that play at first was the last out of the inning. One nothing Texas. We're in the middle of the second in St. Pete. John McDonough, Jessica Mendoza, Tim Kirkchen, Coley Harvey inside Tropicana Field. The first game of this 2023 postseason. Texas leading one to nothing. Already two errors committed by the Tampa Bay Rays. Kevin Cash has his team in the postseason for the fifth year in a row. Just 45 years old. He's the youngest manager in Major League Baseball history to do that. And he is impressive. He's so impressive because he's self-deprecating. 2009, he and I arrived at Yankee Stadium for the first time when it opened. And they wouldn't let me in because they had no idea who I was. They wouldn't let Kevin Cash in. They had to explain, I'm, I'm one of the players on the team. And they said, no, you're not. He goes, yeah, I promise I am. Curtis Meade, his leadoff hitter. And he played in just 24 regular season games. Injuries have opened the door for players like Curtis Meade. And now he's on the playoff roster. Facing Jordan Montgomery. Ground ball through the middle. And that's the second Tampa Bay hit. Both of them singles. Curtis Meade is an amazing story. He's from Australia. I asked him, did you play on your high school team? He said, oh, we didn't have a high school team. So he had to find, you know, Sandlot teams to play on. He said, when I was 13 years old, I was playing against adults. I was playing against grown men, some of whom were 150 pounds more than me. He said, that's where I learned how to play in Australia. 
He got his opportunity and ran with it. Hit safely in 15 straight starts to solidify a, a spot on this postseason roster. He's at first for Manuel Margot, who took a strike. Facing Jordan Montgomery. And the pitch up and away. Margot 264 in 99 games. The power, not what you'd expect, just the four home runs. He spent some time on the injured list. Tries to put his way on. Back it went to Montgomery, who fires to first for the out. And he needed to fire it. This was a bang bang play. And they're going to credit Margot with a sacrifice bunt. Oh, it's a beautiful bunt. And he goes, tries to go for the base hit. Big reason why. You got a lefty on the mound, making him come off the bound, having to turn around and make this throw. Gets him out by half a step. But if that's your sacrifice, that's how you're getting your outs. This is what the Rays do. They can play small ball, they can hit over the wall, they can walk, do so many things to get their offense going. Do either one of you fine analysts want to? Explain to people what a sacrifice bunt is. You don't see it much anymore. Walls bounces one up the middle. Seeger couldn't get rid of the ball. He had trouble. He had semi and ducking to get out of the way. It's a hit for Walls. And any offense he provides is a bonus. He's an excellent glove man, but he hits just 201 in 99 games in the regular season. Now, I'm not sure they're going to get Taylor Walls at first base on this play anyway, but once Seeger gets to it, he's got to dodge his own second baseman who slid right in front of him, Marcus Simeon. This is a bit of a miscommunication out there. I don't think they would have gotten him anyway. So the tying run is at third. And the go-ahead run at first for Jose Siri just back in the lineup. He turned like he might drop down a butt and took a fastball inside. Siri on the injured list from September 12th through the end of the season. He got hit by a pitch in Minnesota on September 11th at a fractured right hand. And he looked great in their workout yesterday. They put him on the roster today. He bunts again and pops it up. Montgomery, wow. a diving catch. Yeah. What a play. <laughs> Because if that lands, that's a big problem for the Texas Rangers. That's a hit and a run scored. So we talked about the Ranger defense. We didn't talk about how good a defender Jordan Montgomery's been because he's made two. That is a tremendous play. And this, and this is a backhand dive. I mean, you think about him being able to get off the mound, backhand, and get to this. Amazing play. Probably could have let it go and would have gone the foul anyway, but. Were you surprised about the sacrifice attempt again? She sacrificed only once, Siri, all year. I I'm not because Siri hasn't played in a while. Bruce Bochy told us his timing is off right now. They wanted to get him in this lineup for his defense. Well, I'm surprised he tried to bunt a pitch that's up at the strike zone. Yeah. That's a very difficult pitch to get down. Bochi out there just to make sure Montgomery's okay. Wow. <laughs> that was a heck of a play. You do not see pitchers, first of all, get anywhere outside of the mound on a play like that, let alone go for it, backhand, and make this grab. As you said, Tim, tough pitch to bunt up there. You know, runners on first and third. He can run easily on the pitcher, ball in the air, gets the runner home. And this is a hard surface, artificial surface. Looks like he's okay. I do think he could have let it go and it would have gone foul, though. Mm -hmm. and then even better that he caught it because if he hit it in the air, didn't catch it, knocked it into foul ground, that might have been a big problem for the Rangers. Now he can pitch out of this jam. Still trying to catch his breath. And facing the number nine hitter, Rene Pinto. Hit 252. Two bunts in the second inning of a playoff game. Don't see that very often. Turn back the clock day here in St. Petersburg. 
Strike one called, I guess. I can't long for the old days of sacrifice bunts and moving runners along and then criticize them when they do it. Sean, the I can, but I'm not going to. The Braves it, had one sacrifice bunt all last season. It's ridiculous. Montgomery off the third base end of the rubber, misses inside the pink toe. Montgomery led the Rangers in wins innings, pitched ERA from August 4th, which was the date of his first start after he came over from St. Louis to the end of the season. As Bochy said, I didn't really know a lot about him. Kevin Cash says his hitters do, because Montgomery spent a lot of time in the American League with the Yankees. Good off speed pitch there. And Pinto out ahead of it. And that's the changeup. That's Ben watching his last few starts, especially Sean against Seattle. It was this pitch, the changeup. They got more swing and miss, missed more bats, and was able to really execute, especially against this right-handed batter. And he's a four-pitch pitcher. So if you're looking for any of the other three, and he throws in that changeup, that's a tough at bat. Opponents in those last four starts hit just one for 14 against him with runners in scoring position. That's the situation again. The runner goes from first and Pinto swings and misses. And what a job by Montgomery. The terrific catch on the popped up punt and then the strikeout of Patino, of a Pinto rather, to get out of the inning and still leading one to nothing, the Rangers. Biggest weaknesses for Tampa Bay this season has definitely been the defense. And you saw Yandy Diaz early had the air, not being able to get to this one. Bad throw over to Glass now. A ball that got by him 89 miles an hour. He would tell you he can get to this. And then Renee Pinto throwing this into center field, stolen base, and then the advancement. Two errors early, just in two innings. And that's kind of been ta Tampa Bay's biggest Achilles, has been that defense. Couldn't get the bunt down. In the last half inning, so Glass now still facing a one nothing deficit. He threw ball one to Corey Seager. And, and keep in mind, the Rangers made 16 errors the entire second half of the season, 57 all year. You make mistakes against them, there you're going to pay. But then again, nobody gets charged with an error all season long in Major League <laughs> Baseball. It's pretty <laughs> obvious for a long time that the words had gone out to official scores. You know, I checked on that, Sean, and I was told point blank, no one ever told anyone, start calling more hits. Major but, coincidence, but I guess. I'm with you. <laughs> Fastball for a strike. Seeger with Robbie Grossman and Adolis Garcia to follow against Glasnow. Swing and a miss. Got that good off speed curveball. Here's Coley. Well, guys, I got to tell you that the Rangers, aside from this last at bat here, they haven't really much sounded like a team that's been short on sleep. I'm sitting right next to their dugout right now, and so far today, they have been chirping and clapping and cheering each other up with a lot of noticeable life. It kind of reminds me of being next to a Little League dugout. I've heard a lot of that kind of cheering. Seems like a good sign for a team that's had a wild 48 hours. We have indeed Robbie Grossman to deep first. Diaz feeds Glass now cleanly. And two quick outs. And Glass now could use an easy inning. He's up to 46 pitches already here in the third. And Sean, we've seen the great curveball now. Brandon Lau, his teammate, told me he faced Glasnow in 2020 in the camp. And he said he threw me a curveball, and out of the hand, I thought it was a fastball. I swung at a curveball in the dirt because I thought it was a fastball. That's unheard of. You think a curveball is a fastball out of the hand. Fastball inside to Garcia. He struck out swinging, ending the first. Four strikeouts for Glass now. Oh. Chopper to short. Walls, and again, Diaz can't come up with it. That was a tough play. It was a tough play for Walls as well at the beginning. He started to come in on it, then realized he needed a retreat. And they've charged him with an error, the third already for Tampa Bay. Right, now this is a really tricky play because the second hop, watch it explode on him. And he is a great defensive shortstop. But he short hops this ball to first. I've seen a lot of first basemen pick that, but again, three errors already for the Rays. Uh, pretty unlike them. Can Texas take advantage? 
Rare error for Walls. He made only eight in the regular season in 99 games. Of course, they're without Wander Franco, who left the team mid-season, put on administrative leave. And the pitch is a strike. And an 0-2 count on Lowe, who singled, leading off last inning and scored the only run of this game today. Side corner. And the error does not hurt Tampa Bay in the third. Carlos Correa and the Twins getting closer to their first pitch less than an hour away against the Jays in Minneapolis on ESPN. Don't want to miss out? Just tell Siri, show me today's MLB schedule. How's that? Siri, Siri, the phone Siri, is that Jose Siri? <laughs> Regardless, here's the schedule. Blue Jays and Twins in less than an hour. Tonight, the National League action. The Diamondbacks at the Brewers, the Marlins at the Phillies. Wild card round, best of three series. And the higher seeded team with all of the home games. So game two will be here tomorrow in this series. And if necessary, game three on Thursday. Diaz would like to atone for a rough start in the field. Fly to right, leading off the Tampa Bay first, facing Jordan Montgomery. And he had his breakthrough season offensively. You know, before this year, he never went out of the strike zone. This year, he's gone a couple inches here or there out of the strike zone and rifles that ball to right center field. That's why he's the first Ray ever to lead the league in hitting. Takes one over the inner third for a strike. That 330 average he posted in the regular season is also the club record. Which was 320 for Jason Bartlett back in 2009. In the dirt, it skips to the backstop. He hit 363 here at the Trop, which was also their club record for home batting average. Yeah, but the biggest difference, the 22 home runs, the power came. He's always hit for average. Get more aggressive, pulling the ball. He walks a lot as well. He strikes out here. Didn't seem to like the call, but it looked like it had plenty of plate. And Montgomery has his second strikeout. They come back to back. He got Pinto to end the second. two-seam fastball and you'll see it start in and then run back over the plate you rarely see that pitch left on right executed that way a tough pitch to hit change up low and away to Randy Arozarena who singled in the first Time called by Carlos Torres. Just as Montgomery had started in his delivery. Throws a rain, as we mentioned, has a reputation now for being a clutch postseason player. He's hit a home run in three of his last five postseason series openers. So a couple of years ago in the offseason, he raced a horse. And he beat a horse in a race. And then he comes back the next spring and no tells No offense, but it must have been a slow horse. I'm sure this is a good story. He tells Kevin Cash, I need the green light. Every time Kevin Cash said, why? He said, well, I just raced a horse and I beat him. Probably I need the green light. Broken down horse. <laughs> now, that's pretty impressive regardless of the condition of the horse. <laughs> He still didn't get the green light, though. <laughs> yeah, he takes the ball outside. He's already had a thrill today. His mom was here seeing him play for the first time in the United States. And she threw out the first pitch, and she threw a strike right. from the rubber. Forcing fastball. She nailed it. First three-ball count for Montgomery. That's a ring line drive toward the gap in left center. It's going to get all the way to the wall. 
Uh, Rosarena will stop after rounding second. More of the same in the postseason from a Rosarena. He's two for two. Well, we know where the skills come from. There's Mama Sanja throwing out the first pitch. Hey, look at that. I mean, seriously? And wasn't even nervous, she said. Gets around this changeup. I mean, look at how long he gets his swing to get to a pitch slow moving away from the barrel. But this is Randy Rosarena. Postseason, he gets even better. I think he likes the attention just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not shying from the spotlight. Harold Ramirez now. He slices one down the right field line. Garcia in fair territory makes the catch. And uh, Rosarena will move on to third with two outs. Yeah. Garcia had to go a long way for this ball because he was shading center field on this. But again, they have such a good defensive outfield. All three of them can really throw. And here he goes a long way to, to make a good play. So another chance for Tampa Bay. They've left three men on over the first two innings. Here's Isak Paredes, who lined a left, robbed of a hit on a diving catch by Evan Carter to end the inning. They stranded one in that first and two left inning. Change up, and he gets the borderline strike. And, and this guy kind of sums up the range. They traded Austin Meadows to get this guy. Meadows had driven in 100 runs, and people said, what are you doing? And here it is, two years later, he hits 31 homers and drives in 95 runs. He's a very dangerous hitter. Yeah, they do it over and over again. I mean, they have Junior Tommy Arrows, 20 years old. They got from Cleveland. How do you get a guy like this from another organization? I mean, take a look at StatCast powered by Google Cloud. We talked about it. All 31 of his homers this season, all 53 careers. Uh, Cole, home run. Not surprisingly, they play him Cole in the outfield. Rosa Reina. Leads from third and a good block by Heim on a pitch in the dirt. Cool. Jonah Heim has had a great year defensively. The Rangers are pushing for him to win the gold glove and the silver slugger behind the plate. And that is textbook how you block that ball. You deaden it at the plate by moving your feet and get your, get your body over top. Of it. Two balls and one strike. One nothing Texas. Bottom of the third. And a pop-up in foul ground. Low has room and makes the catch. We'll return with Rangers and Rays from St. Petersburg after this from our ABC stations. We're back in St. Petersburg to the Tampa Bay Rays in the playoffs for the Fifth year in a row hosting this wild card series against Texas. Customize your feed, get personalized stats and highlights, enjoy free live streams of the MLB app, your home for postseason baseball. Download the MLB app today. Tyler Glass now through ball one back to the backstop past Jonah Heim. Heim, Tavares, and Young coming up. Batters six, seven, and eight. Heim hits it hard through the right side, a base hit. So Heim, a switch hitter, has been so much better from the right side in his career, and they really worked on him from the left side in the offseason. His OPS was almost 100 points higher batting left-handed this year, and now he's really dangerous from both sides of the plate. The biggest understanding for him in the left side is knowing the pitches that he can drive. Got one there. They have the lead man on for the second time. The other time was in the second when Lowe singled and scored the only run of this game. Tavares looked at a ball. And a strike. He singled, stole second, went to third on a bad throw by the catcher, Pinto, one of the three Tampa Bay errors, and he was stranded at third in the second inning. Good pitch by Glass now. 96 in a great spot. When you can paint at 96, 98 with your heater, and then you've got that curveball and that slider, it makes it really difficult 
for a hitter to figure out what's coming and what to do with it. We wonder what kind of a season he'd be able to put together if he could stay healthy. Ball inside. He's 30 years old. The 10 wins this season are career high for Tyler Glass now. Strike three on the inside corner. Glasnow has got the good stuff today, boys. He's rolling in all three of his pitches. In fact, six strikeouts. And what he's done is a slider. Dirty down, 91 miles an hour. He's got the curveball we've seen at 85. Then pumping up, dotting the fastball at 96. This strikeout to me, though, dotting that fastball inside part of the plate. Can't get a better location against a really good Rangers team. There's a... Line drive to center, and it's caught by Siri off the bat of Josh Young, who drove in the only run of this game with a sacrifice fly in the second inning. Seen a lot of swing and miss on the breaking balls, and that's exactly what Kevin Cash told us. It's about him being able to get this pitch and land it. Four strikes and then get the chase as well. A lot of traffic in this game. Neither pitcher has had a one, two, three inning. Texas now one for eight with runners on base. Oh. There's a drive toward the gap in right center. That's going to be in for a hit for Evan Carter. They're going to hold the runner at third. Heim stopped by Tony Beasley. Little bit surprised with two outs. They didn't take a chance there with as hard as it is to succeed against Glass now. I'm surprised they didn't send him also with two outs, but again, you you got a guy coming up next who's going to be in the top top five of the MVP voting, second and third with two out. You got to send him. And and Heim doesn't run particularly well. I still thought they were going to send him. Well, look where he was, and the ball yeah. wasn't even to the cutoff man yet. He had rounded third. Especially because of how the Rays have thrown the ball around. You have to make them execute there. Marcus Semyon took a ball high. Semyon has fly to left on the first pitch of the game and grounded a short, stranding two in the second. Trying to deliver two here. He takes a breaking ball and a borderline strike on the curve. It's been consistent off the plate, outside to righties. And now inside part of the plate at 98. Not a big crowd, but it's noisy, and they're trying to help Glass now get out of this inning. Biggest pitch of this game so far right here. The one-two to Simeon. Here's a pop-up. On the edge of the outfield, Walls the shortstop. And both teams squandering opportunities early here in St. Pete. Welcome back to Tropicana Field. We're here with Rangers manager Bruce Bochy. And Bruce, uh, we just saw your third base coach, Tony Beasley, there in the last half inning hold Jonah Heim at third. What was your read on that play? Well, it's been close. It's been close. You know, it's it's got to be his call there. He's But, you know, Jonah's not the fastest guy. So, they had a pretty good hitter coming up. Just didn't happen. Uh, your starting pitcher today, Jordan Montgomery, you know, the last uh, four outings that he had in the regular season allowed just two runs, and it seems like he's picked up right there where he left off. What are you seeing so far from, from Jordan? I'm seeing the same thing. He's thrown the ball well. Uh, he's pitched out of a jam. Uh, made a great play himself uh, on that diving. He did hit his hip and uh, right shoulder pretty hard, but he's good to go. He's doing a nice job. Thanks very much, Bruce. Thank you, guys. They're going to do a nice job. What a job Bruce Bochy did in his first year. In Texas, three times a World Series champion with the San Francisco Giants. They've been out for a few years. Strike one to Curtis Mead, who single to stranded at third in the second. Bochy, one of just ten managers in Major League Baseball history, who won at least three World Series titles, and the other nine are all in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Yeah, and he'll be in there soon. I asked 
Will Smith, one of their relievers. What's Bochy been like? He said, it's like he's our grandfather. <laughs> Very wise, sits around and tells a bunch of funny stories, but there is no sharper manager in the game than Bruce Bochy. Inside out for Meade, and a nice backhand play by Wall to Montgomery for the out. So Meade retired. Three to one. Today's active play of the game is brought to you by the Wells Fargo Active Cash Credit Card. And it's been the Rangers defense. Evan Carter making a sweet read, sweet dive. How about your pitcher? Jordan Montgomery coming off the mound, making the diving catch to get out of the inning. This was a huge play. And also the backhand here. We've seen Jan Diaz on the reverse side struggle at first base. Nathaniel Lowe making a perfect play look easy. Difficult play look easy. Rangers, you mentioned it, Tim, one of the best defense in baseball, especially the second half. Very well, Margot, the hitter. He takes a strike. 57 errors all year. The Diamondbacks made 56, and the only other team with fewer than that in the history of baseball, 2013 Orioles with 54. That's how good they were, and Lowe has gotten so much better at first base defensively this year, and we saw it on that play. Yeah, Brochi said when I got here, I had heard he wasn't a very good first baseman, but he's worked hard at it. He's become more than adequate. And Josh Young, the third baseman, has been really good, too. The numbers, you know, all the metrics don't align, but sorry, I'm not looking at the metrics when it comes to defense. Not nearly as much as pitching and offense. Oh, God, 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 God. It's a foul tip, or is it not? Oh, he's called out. Jordan Montgomery, another strikeout. Just third. And there's the curveball again. That <laughs> bounce in front of the plate. Now they say here that this mound appears taller than the mound in other places. So as a hitter, it looks like you're higher, the pitcher is well, higher up. It's like an optical illusion. For you and I, all mounds <laughs> seem high. <laughs> There's Taylor Walls at an infield hit his first time up. He takes the ball, low and away. The Rays have used five different starting shortstops in the month of September. Not exactly how you want to finish out a season, but Walls is clearly their best defender, and he's going to be their everyday shortstop for however long they go in the postseason. Chopped to deep third. Young, low the stretch. He maintained contact with the bag. And that is the first one, two, three inning for either pitcher, and Montgomery needed just nine pitches. They're getting closer to the first pitch. Blue Jays and Twins, 4.30 on ESPN. Pleasant day outside. Temperature in the mid-80s in the Tampa Bay area. Climate controlled 72. Inside Tropicana Field, where the Tampa Bay Rays are still trying to win their first World Series. Matter of fact, the Houston Astros, of the six teams still alive in the American League, defending World Series champs. Other than that, these two teams have never won it. You have to go back to 1993, Joe Carter and the Toronto Blue Jays, the last team, the last time any of the other teams in the American League playoffs won a World Series. First ball swinging Seeger, deep drive to center, back at the wall, but Siri can't catch it. Got a glove on it. And it's a double for Seeger. We had another ball that was a tough chance for the Rays in the field, but they didn't make the play. And Siri's in there for his defense. Right, he is a great defensive center fielder. Clearly the best one on this team. I thought he had this tracked a little bit better. You can see he knows where the wall is, and it kind of hit him on the wrist. I mean, it would have been a difficult play, but I bet he will tell you, I should have caught that yeah. ball. I mean, definitely. Might have hurt a little bit, too. So they're not doing much to help Glass now. It was a well-hit ball by Seeger, 108 and a half exit velocity. 
And a strike for Robbie Grossman. Evening the count at one ball and one strike. If you're just joining us, the only run was in the second inning. Nathaniel Lowe let off with a single. Pitch in the dirt. After Jonah Heim struck out, Yoni Tavares singled to right field. Lowe went to third and scored on a sacrifice fly by Josh Young. That's it. Another good block by Pincho again. One reason he's in there, you can see a bunch of curveballs, some in the dirt, and he really blocks it well. Swing and a miss at a high fastball. Two and two on Grossman. He has struck out and grounded to first. With Adolis Garcia on deck. 69 pitches for Glass now. And if it gets to a battle of the bullpens, advantage Tampa Bay, although they are without some key arms due to injury. But the Rangers made the playoffs despite a season-long struggle in the pen. I would say big advantage for the Rays in the bullpen. That's why the Rangers need to get a couple of runs here. And that's ball four, just a little bit down and in. So the first two men are on. The wild card series continues tonight. The National League action under the lights from Milwaukee. The Arizona Diamondbacks back in the playoffs at the Brewers. And then the Marlins at the Phillies. Brewers game on ESPN 2 at 7 Eastern time. The Marlins and Phillies start at 8 on ESPN. The winner of the Philadelphia Miami series will advance to take on the number one seed in the National League. The Braves and the Victor of the Brewers Diamondback series against the Dodgers. No easy task. <laughs> what an LCS that would be if it winds up being the Braves and the Dodgers. <laughs> I think there would be a lot of eight to seven scores in those games because those are two of the best offensive teams we've seen in a while. We saw the pitch count. And obviously, it's been inflated by the poor defense played behind glass now. Garcia skies one heading toward the seats down the right field line. And almost hit a catwalk, Sean. And we if, know all the rules. Right. If, if it hits a catwalk, we are <laughs> we're just as buttoned up as you can possibly be. <laughs> Although I think if it actually does happen, we'll probably choke and forget what Charlie <laughs> Relliford told us. But it's uh, when this thing goes away. Pressure's on, Sean. There'll be a lot of people lining up to detonate this building. <laughs> Mostly broadcast. Yes. Some of those catwalks are in play. The Rays announcers told us before the game that the balls really don't hit up there very often maybe a half a dozen to a dozen times a year it becomes an issue. I want three this series just for you Sean. Swing and a miss by Garcia. There's a guy who's really picked up his performance level in recent years getting better with age. You know there have only been about 20 25 games this year where they've had their entire everyday lineup healthy and when this guy went out with an injury and came back with Josh Young this became a really really good offensive team again. Two highest scoring teams in the league it's a smash off the leg of glass now and not in time the throw from Paredes and now glass now hands on knees will be visited at the mound. 109.9 off the bat. But it might have saved a run. Oh, yeah. If this doesn't hit glass now, this ball, even though they're playing them up the middle, as you can see, this ball is hit so hard, that ball gets through. So even though he's got, he'll have a bruise, at he least turns. no run scored. Oh. Back of the left leg, Jess, what do you think? Yeah, it's got his hamstring. I'm just glad he turned because it missed kneecap, shin. I mean, you just don't want it to hit bone. 110 miles an hour. It's still going to tighten up. We're going to let him throw a couple of pitches, make sure he's OK. Boy, when you have a history of injury, yeah, it just seems like these things have a way of happening to you. It was an oblique strain. Kept him out a couple months to start the season. As he was coming back from Tommy John surgery last year, he appeared only very late in the season. 
He's going to continue. Well, Timmy, you talked about this. It's six foot eight, how athletic he is, all the things that he's able to do. Sean, he can do a backflip. He's 6'8". Mm -hmm. I said to him, you have to be the tallest man ever to do a backflip. He goes, oh, I'm sure guys way bigger than me can do a backflip. I don't think so. You know, to talk about his athleticism, his agility, works really hard. I mean, he's done everything right to avoid injuries. It's just something that happens. So here's a big spot for Lowe and a pitch in the dirt blocked by Pinto. This game could change in a hurry with Texas leading one to nothing, but the base is loaded. And nobody out. You see the Rays are playing double play depth here, willing to give up a run to get the double play on the ball in the middle. Low one for two. He singled, leading off the second score, the only run. He pops it up. That is not going to get the job done. The infield fly rule is in effect. Paredes made the catch. So... A disappointment for Lowe. As many of you undoubtedly have heard and read, his brother Josh plays for Tampa Bay. They were hoping their mom Wendy would be here, but she is battling cancer. And certainly we send our thoughts and prayers to her. And way too much sadness around baseball lately. That's off the glove of Pinto to the backstop and a run scores. Seeger across the plate, it's two to nothing. And again, the Rays continue to help the Texas Rangers offense. Oh, we've told you three times what a good defensive catcher Pinto is, and he is, but he had no shot at this one. This is a wild pitch. The ball just got way away from glass now. The Rangers have a two to nothing lead here, and they've gotten a lot of help from the Rays. Infield in now with Heim the hitter and he takes an off-speed pitch high and now of course you got to move the infield in here now with no double play in order everyone's up check swing at the ball on the dirt Kevin Cash does have bullpen action now And that's ball four up and away. Well, the inning started with a double credited to Seeger on a ball that certainly could have been caught by Siri, was not. Zach Littell and Chris Davinsky are two right handed hitters warming up. And the crowd very quiet here at Tropicana Field now. Swing and a miss. And a high pitch. Tavares strike one. He is singled and struck out. Seen the fastball velocity go down about three or four miles an hour in this inning. He started 97 98. That last pitch, 93. 82 pitches were in the fifth inning. And the defense is really driven up the pitch count. Swinging a foul off his leg. Severus quickly in an 0-2 hole. The season high pitch count for last now was 103 in early September. Here's the 20th pitch of the inning upcoming. Severus with Josh Young on deck. 2-0 Texas. They've out hit Tampa Bay 6-4. Swing and a miss. They had a curveball. Not certain that's exactly where Glasnow meant to throw that one. Now it's definitely a miss, Sean. Gets this curveball up at the top of the zone. But you see the bat of Tavares swinging underneath it. Seven Ks now. And ball one off speed, low and away to Young, who had a sacrifice fly in the second inning. <laughs> and fly to center in the fourth. Batting with the bases loaded. Grossman at third, Garcia at second, Heim at first.
Outfield around toward right for this right handed batter. Another off speed pitch on which he swung and missed. And the goal with Glass now is to swing at the fastball and try not to swing at the breaking ball. Easier said than done. The one two pitch. He struck him out. With that devastating curveball low and away, he struck out eight. Can he get some help? He hasn't had any from the defense. He's hoping the bats will come to life as we head to the bottom of the fifth in St. Petersburg. We're back here at Tropicana Field with Rays manager Kevin Cash. Kevin. You guys had three errors on the on defense today. Obviously had the wild pitch in the last half inning, but still somehow minimized the damage. How have you guys been able to do that? Yeah, I don't know. We're doing things a little uncharacteristic right now, but we're still in a ball game. Got to get some guys on base. Montgomery's been tough, but see if we can get some guys on base in that big hit. You were just referencing the Rangers pitcher, but your pitcher, Tyler uh, Glasnow, was moving through the first four innings, kind of ran into some trouble here in the fifth. What'd you see in the fifth inning? Yeah, a little bit, but he's got such swing and miss capabilities. He can do that. That inning should have got separated, but Fortunately for us, Tyler got pretty nasty pretty quick. Also, how's he doing? He's all right. Thanks very much. Back to you guys. Jose Siri leading off. He had a long, loud foul. He tried to butt the runners at first and third, one out in the second inning, and popped it up. One of many uncharacteristic things that Kevin Cash was just talking about for the Rays. There's a looping pop up near the first base coach's box. Low has it. How uncharacteristic is the defense? Well, you have to go back to October 14, 2008, the last time the Rays committed three errors in a postseason game. They played 54 postseason games since then. That was against the Red Sox. Kevin Cash hit a home run for Boston in that game. <laughs> Rays still won it despite the errors, 13-4. It was game four of the 08 ALCS. Strike taken by Pinto, who struck out swinging to end that second inning when they left runners at first and third. Montgomery has retired six in a row. And he has had an economy of pitches, and that's a big deal given the difficulty in the bullpen. Just 51, so he could go for a while. Two balls and a strike. The top of the order. The league's leading hitter, Yandy Diaz, on deck. Big swing. And a foul tip on a pitch away. You know, we don't even think twice about it anymore. We have a starting pitcher who goes from the stretch all the time. Fewer moving parts. Throw just as hard out of the stretch. More and more guys doing this. It makes so much sense. We're seeing it with hitters, too. Simplifying. Just get to the point where you can be the most powerful. And for so long, you thought you needed to be long, bigger. Pitchers just want to be more efficient and consistent. And that's how they do it. His payoff pitch is popped up. Yeah, that'll be out of play. Montgomery out of the University of South Carolina Gamecock fourth round draft choice of the New York Yankees in 2014 He's had some good years finished sixth in the rookie of the year voting in 2017 but has really found a groove since the trade over from St. Louis gets the ball in game one of the postseason from Bruce Bochy Seeger throws out Pinto Two outs. We're in the fifth, two nothing Texas. MLB celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month by recognizing the contribution made to our game by the Latino baseball community, past and present. Follow at Los Mayores and at MLB and visit LosMayores.com for full coverage. Here is Yandy Diaz, 0 for 2. 
So it's been an interesting year. He's had a 3.20 ERA, but his team is 11 and 21 in games that he started this year. So I looked it up. Last 30 years, only three other pitchers have had an ERA that low, and their teams have had a winning percentage that low. 11 and 21 when Montgomery starts, and he's really good. That's got to go back, obviously, to St. Louis and the lack yep. of production. Right, and the bullpen here certainly hasn't helped. And the offense has been sporadic. Streaky like just about everything about this Texas team this year, except the defense. Pretty well hit. And looking better as it travels, but caught in the middle of the warning track by Tavares. And Montgomery is mowing them down now. He's retired not eight in a row, pitching a shutout in the fifth. Last inning, how the Rangers got on the board. And Corey Seager hits his wand off the wrist. Cody Siri almost able to get to that, ends up dropping it. And then a line drive 110 miles an hour off the leg of glass now. Wild pitch scores one run. A walk loads the bases, but Tyler Glass now with the bases loaded. Nobody out. Two consecutive strikeouts. Missed that beautiful breaking ball. They did get one more run, but getting out of that inning was the most impressive. He's looked all game. Throwing 88 pitches as he gets ready to go to work here in the sixth. Both runs earned. And ball one drifts up and away to Evan Carter. Carter again, a 9% chase rate. 9%. That's unbelievably low. I said, how? I said, where does that come from? Where did you learn plate discipline? He said, well, I've never even worked at it. I don't even practice it. I just kind of have it. <laughs> like he's kind of born with it. It's an eight. It's like you and me, Sean. We're, we're born short. He's yeah. born with tremendous plate discipline. Yeah, but we were born with movie star good looks and <laughs> a ton of humility. <laughs> And Carter takes the ball down and in. I just kind of have it. <laughs> it's not lying if you can back it up, right? No, he wasn't boasting. He was saying, I just, I can do this. I, and I've never tried to work on it. He just turned 21. Okay, and I told you he's had 20 3-2 counts and 75 plate appearances this year and two more in this game. And yeah, here's a, another walk. <laughs> and he's been on base all three times. Hey, Scott, this stuff's perfect for fall, right? Yeah, it feeds your lawn now to strengthen roots all winter for a better lawn next spring. How do you know all this? Says it right there on the back. No, it does. Yes, it does. Pick up a bag of Scott's Winter Guard today. It's guaranteed. Feed your lawn. Feed it. So the lead man on again. That's three straight innings and four out of six. The first man has reached for Texas. And the ball low to Marcus Simeon, who's 0 for 3. So the Rangers in Seattle last week and scored eight runs in four games. They are a great offensive team and they got away from what has made them a great offensive team. And Bruce Bochy was not happy with the approach too much trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. They did hit 49 homers in September but he said we got to get back to putting the ball in play hit a line drive to right field something. Well, and facing Seattle is like facing postseason pitching. I mean, that's one of the best pitching staffs that you're going to see in all of baseball, especially in Seattle, that atmosphere, which is why he wanted them to shorten up. Those big swings that work against certain pitchers will not work in the postseason. Well, they got shut out twice in that four-game series by the M's. And that's ball four back-to-back -back walks now. And that might be it for Glass now. 98 pitches. Again, a very deep, versatile bullpen. This is time. And Chris Davinsky will be summoned. It's 
So last now departs after 98 pitches. No support for him today at the plate or in the field. Tyler Glass now out after 98 pitches. You see his teammates kind of lined up and he wanted no part of fist bumps or pats on the back. Kevin Cash did tell us before the game for a guy who's really chill to use his word when it's not game day he can be very intense and every now and then you'll hear crash bang boom around the uh, clubhouse or dugout down there and he just tells Glass now don't get hurt. He pitched better. He got no support today. But again, 5.75 ERA in his postseason career coming into today. And now, in his post career, 45 and two thirds innings, he's walked 25 guys. And now he's got the Rays in a little more trouble here. Well, here's Chris Davinsky, who made the postseason roster with a big finish to the regular season, did not allow an earned run over his final seven outings, encompassing seven and a third innings. 32 year old veteran right hander. Created by a line drive, sinking fast on a ball in front of Siri. And it's off his glove and up into the air. Around the score, Carter, and now the throw goes into the dugout. Fans boo. They do not recognize this team in the white uniforms here today. Simeon in as well. <laughs> And Seeger winds up at third base. Well, first off, a tremendous read by Evan Carter at second base. This ball looked like it could get caught, and Evan Carter said, this is not getting caught, and he took off and forced the throw to third. And again, another sloppy play by the Rays. This ball bounces up on Jose Siri, but this is the mistake. I mean, you can't help the hop, it's the throw. you got to be able to understand need to and then he throws it away another run comes in so it's a single and I would guess one RBI for Seeger right the second one scores on the air and the ball went into the dugout infield Dan Grossman takes another ball in the dirt Again, if you throw to the proper base here the double place is play is still in order and instead you got to run in and a guy third with nobody out Grossman 0 for 2. He walked his last time up. Another block by Pinto. Four runs, seven hits, no errors for Texas. No runs, four hits, four errors committed by Kevin Cash's Tampa Bay Rays. And a high fly ball to left. Not particularly deep. A Rosa Rain at the catch. They're not going to try it with Seeger. And a good call. Nobody out. Corey Seeger stay there. He's got an RBI machine and Garcia coming up next. It's a good hold by Tony Beasley at third. Four errors, Sean. The franchise record in a postseason game. They didn't make four errors in a game all year. Their season high in the regular season in a game was three. Which they did three times. Garcia the hitter. And a little late on a fastball from Chris Davinsky. Adolis is struck out, reached on an error by the shortstop walls and had an infield hit. All the way just to our right. It's two four seamers in a row. Let's see if he comes back with that changeup. He throws it 51% of the time. It's his best pitch. A little bit up and in. Quite a bit up, actually. And no fun with the infield in with a big hitter like this at the plate. Down to third, a nice stop. Paredes threw him out. I think the big
biggest thing the airs affect is everyone else on your team and you're just seeing with all these shots you saw it with Tyler and we shot him in the, the dugout but shoulders sagging I mean just the way that affects the body language the energy it's tough I mean when you're you're down is one thing but when you're giving teams runs it's it's frustrating for the rest of your team it's not just the four errors, but there have been others that could have been errors, or at least plays that should have been made that weren't scored errors. Diaz to Dubetsky to get Nate Lowe and end the inning. John, I have never seen a bad defensive team do anything in the postseason. It has been a bad defensive game. Triple header on ESPN and ESPN Plus. We can't wait to get the NHL season started. Hard to believe it's one week from tonight with that triple header. Predators and Lightning just across the causeway. Blackhawks and Penguins honor the Darge debut. Kraken and Golden Knights, they'll raise the Stanley Cup banner in Vegas. One week from tonight. A Rose Arena takes a strike from Jordan Montgomery. He was working on a four hit shutout. Two of those hits belong to a Rose Arena. He is singled and doubled. Montgomery has not given up a homer to a left handed hitter in 12 starts, which is one reason why they got nine right handed hitters in the line. Josh Lowe is one of their best players, and he's not playing tonight because he bats left handed. That's how difficult Montgomery can be on left handed hitters. Josh Lowe likely will be in there quickly if they get a right handed pitcher in there and have a hitter for whom they would hit. Heim goes to the mound. To speak to Montgomery. Down to third, you get a pitch right over the heart of the plate to the hard ground ball to third base. So we had a little subliminal messaging. Saw so MLBShop.com. Now we want to tell you why that was up there. You can wear what the players are wearing on the field during the postseason. Check out the largest selection of authentic jerseys, caps, t-shirts, and more. Root for your favorite team on at MLBShop.com. Harold Ramirez swinging early again you know his nickname here he's been such a good hitter his nickname is Barreled Ramirez because he hits so many balls on the barrel Barreled Ramirez and he needs a knock here to get things going that's for sure he's 0 for two Montgomery is retired nine in a row now and a swing and a miss at the change up away not a pitch that Ramirez doesn't like. I mean, he is an aggressive hitting player, swings at just about anything. I mean, this is a changeup that most righties don't want against the lefties. Let's see why the run away from him. Fouls one at the plate. Ramirez hit 387 against lefties in the regular season. That led the American League. Nothing doing so far. Sean McDonough, Tim Kirkchen, Jessica Mendoza, Holy Harvey down in the dugouts. Game one of this wild card series, Texas leading Tampa Bay four to nothing. Bottom of the sixth and a pitch in the dirt. Wasn't a move that got a lot of attention near the trade deadline that turned out to be a big move for Texas when they got Montgomery from St. Louis on July 30th. 
I'm still not sure why the Yankees traded Jordan Montgomery, and I'm not sure why the Cardinals did either, even though the Cardinals did well in that trade. But Chris Young, the GM for the Rangers, has done a tremendous job bringing in people who fit what they do and real good character guys in the clubhouse. Montgomery's one of them also. He struck him out. Off-speed curveball. And there's that curveball again. The league hit 191 against his curveball this year. When you have curveball and a sinker and a changeup and a four-seamer, and you got him guessing at four pitches, it could be a tough day, and it is right now for the Rays. So two outs, the base is empty. Here's Isak Paredes. Who takes a breaking ball. Uh, you mentioned when Montgomery was traded August 2nd of last year by the Yankees to St. Louis. That surprised a lot of people. They got Harrison Bader, the center fielder, in return. Montgomery was having a good year for New York. Had a 3.69 ERA. One ball and one strike. If Paredes could reach, Curtis Mead would hit next. Boy, he's putting out a pitching clinic right now. And he's leaning a lot more on the breaking ball and going to that curveball a lot more. Third time through the order. So this is the heart of the order. They got two and three hitters out. Now the cleanup hitter in Paredes. Again, he is so deceptive. It's so difficult to see where the ball is and when it comes out of his hands. He's had the raise hitters off balance, especially the last three or four innings. Making just his third postseason appearance of his career is Jordan Montgomery at age 30. Pitched for St. Louis last year, game two of the wild card series against Philadelphia. Two and two thirds innings, gave up two hits and three walks. Also pitched in the postseason 2020 for the Yankees. There's a hump back line drive and a base hit. Bobbled by Carter, and heading to second is Paredes. So the first hiccup in the field for Texas from Evan Carter. Look at the two strikes swing here. The location of this pitch is up and in. And Paredes is on the plate. The fact that he keeps his hand so close to his body to get to 94 literally at the handle to get this to be a base hit. How he keeps this fair is unbelievable, especially with two strikes. Gets it in the left field. And you're right, Evan Carter unable to come up with it. A rare error for the Rangers. As Paredes yeah, they the scored it a double. Pitch down and in. It would be interesting to see where Paredes was. He was not going to second. No, he wasn't that. going to second. That's why you have to charge an error. I put error. <laughs> yeah, especially you're not going to make the first out of the inning at second base. Down by four runs here. Curtis Meade has singled and grounded out. And he hits it to third. Young throws him out. That ends the inning. After six, four, nothing. Texas right now let's send it to ABC News for a special report. The Major League Baseball Wild Card Series continued tonight. National League gets underway at seven on ESPN2, Arizona in Milwaukee, and then Miami at Philadelphia. 8 p.m. on ESPN. You might have heard the announcement. They did just change that last scoring decision. A single for Paredes and an error on Carter, allowing him to get the second. It didn't hurt Texas. Batting with a 4 0 lead are the Rangers in the seventh inning. Jonah Heim has been on base twice. Routine ground ball to second to Curtis Mead. And Devensky's retired four in a row now. He's pitched an inning in a third. After five plus from the starter, Tyler Glass now. Remember his days with Houston, Astros in the postseason. He was 
Really their eighth inning guy that they leaned on a ton because of that changeup. See it right there. Beautiful pitch. Hasn't really been the same since. Tavares singled his first time up and stole second. He struck out twice since. All of that against Glass now. Zensky off the first base end of the rubber induces a slicing foul ball to Varis and then Josh Young. And there is a tremendous amount of room between the left fielder and the center fielder. And Tavares looked like he was trying to shoot something that way on that swing. Timmy, that's got to be your approach when you're facing a heavy changeup pitcher. Let's try to be as late as possible. Poke it to the left side. Now the 2 2 pitch. That's hit well to left to Rosa Reyna. Middle of the track makes the catch. Let's send you back to the studio. Here's Kevin Connors. All right, Sean, you know, Royce Lewis was one of the mashers in that Minnesota lineup. 15 home runs in 58 games. This was the rookie's first career postseason at bat, and he delivers off Kevin Gaussman. 18 consecutive postseason losses, but the Twins are in front on ESPN. Two to nothing there. Four to nothing, Texas here. So this is Josh Young, who spells his last name J-U-N-G. I said, has anyone ever pronounced it properly the first time? He said, never, never, not once. It, everyone always says Jung or something like that. So he has to explain people. It's, it's an old German pronunciation. That's all I can tell you. But no one's ever gotten it right on the first shot. Well, I, I don't want to be argumentative, although it is my nature. <laughs> Stop. But the first time I did a game he played in, the Texas announcers told me, by the way, it's pronounced young. So you Plus, I was right. familiar with him because he had already had, you know, some success at the major league. That humility is coming through strong. There you go. <laughs> Walls throws him out. No matter how you pronounce it, it's the final out of the inning. And it's the seventh inning stretch. We'll return after this from our ABC stations. Today's game track is brought to you by Volvo. Rangers leading four to nothing, aided by four errors by the Rays, which is their franchise postseason record. And Jeff Montgomery's been outstanding, working on a five-hit shutout as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning with Dick Vitale. His Rays have not been awesome, baby, today. <laughs> Good to see the great Dickie V here. Wife Lorraine alongside. Dickie V loves defensive basketball. And he, and he loves these Rays. Hasn't seen it in baseball for his team today. Manuel Margot leads off against Montgomery. And lays off one that turns over low and away. Margot 0 for 1. He was credited with a sacrifice back in the second inning and then struck out. And that was pitch number 76 for Montgomery. Again, with that shaky Ranger bullpen, every pitch, every inning he can give them is critical. And he's only at 77 pitches. He's thrown at least 94 in each of his last four starts. A season high 107. Swing and a miss to the pitch away. Margot, Tyler Walls, and Jose Siri do up. Line drive caught by Young. Going to his left. His glove arm fully extended. He took a hit away from Margot. Again, the metrics are not kind to him defensively, but you ask the guys on this team, and they'll tell you he's a way above average defensive third baseman. 
And here he took five steps to caught, catch that ball. He showed a little range and made a really nice play. To help Montgomery, who's now retired 12 out of 13. Young, another young star. Just 25 years old, number eight overall pick in the 2019 draft. Walls, a swing and a miss. Going a lot more to the curveball and change up these last couple innings and just shows you the multitude of pitches that he can throw, but also how he can sequence those pitches to still get swing and miss this late in the game. You know, I wonder if Rays fans are looking at the team and says, what happens to us in the postseason, at least lately? Remember last year, they lost to the Guardians in two games. They scored one run in two games. They went nine for 78, struck out 29 times. Again, haven't scored yet today. And the last game was 15 innings. Yes, they played 24 innings and scored one run. They were knocked out in this round in Cleveland last year. Lost to the Red Sox in the ALDS. Lost to the Dodgers in 2020 in six games in the World Series. Knocked out by the Astros in 2019 in the Division Series. That's a little lob and it's over the head of Seager. And a base hit for Wall. So he was a 2-0-1 hitter in the regular season, but he is two for three today about the only way you're able to get on base against Jordan Montgomery in this one, a soft hit because it's been a lot of swing and miss, a lot of pitch location. He's in the curveball be his best pitch. The sinker, the way he's able to locate it, but just the four Ks, three have come on this pitch. That curveball, see that late action? It's been super deceptive. And how about the D? Get out of a jam in this one. A bunt coming off the mound, making plays. He's been the story of the game for the Rangers. Through ball one inside to Siri, who's 0 for 2, and has had a couple of adventures in the field as well. Activated today for the first time since September 11th. Missed the end of the regular season with a fractured right wrist. Change up and a strike, and Montgomery's benefited from getting that call all day long. They have bullpen action now. Josh Spores, the right-hander, wanting up. And Spores, Chapman, and Jose Leclerc are the three. We'll see if they need three the rest of the way. The runner goes, and it's a pop fly in shallow left. Walls will have to retreat back to first as Carter makes the catch. And Will Smith was their closer, but he really struggled. He's been taken out of that role. He's really a mop-up man right now on the staff. Play ball is baseball's global youth initiative to highlight the fun and accessible ways to play our great game. To learn more, including how to find a league near you, go to playball.org and follow at playball on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Only 19,704 here in St. Petersburg at Tropicana Field for this first game of the postseason. John, this is Junior Caminero pinch hitting. He's 20 years old, started the year at A ball, was called up from double A. There was no way he was coming to the big leagues this year except for all the injuries that they had. But he is a, he's got an amazing power swing. I saw him take batting practice the other day in Toronto and the fans gave him a standing ovation. He hit the ball so far and so hard. Nine straight pitches he hit out of the ballpark. It was incredible. He's become a fan favorite very quickly. But Kevin Cash said he's never seen anybody do that. Right. What and you witnessed alongside the batting cage the other day. Right. And he's got hair that looks just like Ronald Acuna's hair. So Kevin Cash asked the GM, he says his hair looks like Acuna's. Can he hit like Acuna? Well, he hit a ball on Sunday, home run to right center field at Rogers Center in Toronto, 107 miles an hour on a ball on the inside part of the plate. That's how strong this kid is. This got called up on September 23rd. And he takes a breaking ball. He's batting for Pinto. Tampa Bay. 
They're pinch hitters at 305. Best in the major leagues. Pitch number 89 from Montgomery drifts up and away. Caminero is 20 years and 80 days old. And at the time of his debut, he's the youngest player to appear in a major league game this season. And the second youngest, Ray ever, B.J. Upton, was 19, just shy of his 20th birthday when he made his debut. Trying to cut the deficit in half with one swing. He lines one back to the screen. And just watch him. He's got a lot of whip in his swing. But it's a controlled whip. Usually a whippy swing fires somebody with a really long swing. He is pretty short to the ball and gets tremendous amount of bat speed. And his helmet comes off a lot. <laughs> Maybe it's the Acuna type hair. Short lead from first for Walls. Backdoor breaking ball, a strike. That has been consistently called. It's off the plate a couple inches. It's a breaking ball, the back doors never really gets the play, but it has been called consistently to these right handed batters. To the great benefit of Jordan Montgomery. Trying to get out of this situation. Ray's had a lot of chances early, not many lately. That one's high. You know the heartbeat right now. Common arrow is going, it is pumping. You can see he's taking deep breaths, really trying to calm himself down. He almost triggered a swing, or he did trigger to swing on that last one. He was able to held up. Just the third three ball count for Montgomery. Walls will be off with the payoff pitch. And he struck him out with an off-speed curve away. What a performance by Jordan Montgomery. One of the most important parts of this Texas Rangers season. We're back in St. Petersburg, and we remind you that all four of these series continue tomorrow. Rangers and Rays get us started. Actually, if you made a note of the starting times of the networks today, it's the exact same thing tomorrow. I mean, we're making it about as easy as we possibly can. Blue Jays and Twins, 4.30 ESPN. Diamondbacks Brewers, 7 p.m. ESPN 2, Marlins Phillies, 8 p.m. ESPN. Here's Jake Diekman, the veteran lefty. Third pitcher of the afternoon for Tampa Bay. Nice job by Chris Stavinsky. Tired the last six men he faced. Gave up one hit. First man he faced, and it's an all-new battery. Christian Bethencourt is the new catcher they hit for Rene Pinto in the bottom of the seventh, four nothing Texas. Evan Carter takes the strike. He's been on base all three times. He's walked twice and doubled. He scored one of their two runs in the sixth. Pretty bizarre pitching line for Diekman this year. 3.34 ERA, 56 and two thirds innings, 37 hits. 38 walks. He's walked more guys than he has given up hits. Mitch Williams, by the way, did that for his career. Think about that for a second. But hes it's very rare to see anyone with more walks than hits allowed in a season. Pop-up over by Dick Vitale. <laughs> Dick, been, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Jess. He's been one of those arms that... Tampa Bay gets came over from the White Sox. I mean, it's over almost an eight ERA. He's been down below two since coming over. He's got that funky look, that arm angle. Down the line, off the glove of Diaz, and in a right field, charged by Marco, and Carter is on base for the fourth time. And we told you he's the fastest guy on the team, and we saw it again there. And as soon as that ball got by Diaz, he said, I'm going to second. Again, this is a tricky play for a first baseman. Once that ball bounces the second time, you're done. But a, a good first baseman makes that play also. Yeah, the ball has just found Diaz from the very beginning today. So they scored a double. And it was a very tough chance for Yandy Diaz. And here's the top of the order for the fifth time. Simeon. First ball swinging, pops that up in shallow right. Margot is under it, not deep enough for Carter to try to advance. 
Digman's been around. He's 36 years old. And to your point, Jeff and Tim, the kind of guy he comes to Tampa Bay and all of a sudden it's a renaissance. He had an ERA of almost eight with the White Sox this year in 13 games. He came here, his ERA is 2.18 in 50 games. This is what they do. They get players, they come here, and they play better than where they were before. Facing Corey Seager takes a sweeping breaking ball low and away. So I did my AL MVP ballot today. It was not easy, by the way. And Corey Seager is not allowed to say who I voted for, but oh, my, he's, here we go. he's really high up. And so are a few other guys in this game. Well, I guess the only question would be, did Otani play enough, do enough? Well, like I said, I'm not allowed to say who I voted for, but Could Corey Seager. Wink at me and Jess. <laughs> Corey Seager had an MVP season if it weren't for Shohei Otani. Okay. okay. Are we gonna, we're not going to defer, though, because we don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> as a, we're not going to infer anything. Fastball inside. Today, Seager reached out an error by Yandy Diaz. That was in the first, kind of set the tone for the entire day. He doubled the ball that could have been caught by Siri, really off the, uh, almost off his wrist in front of the center field fence. He singled a knock in two, and on that play there was an error when Siri threw the ball into the dugout on the third base side. Good stab by Bethancourt. Seager had an OPS over 1,000, led the league in doubles, almost led the league in hitting. Even though he missed a bunch of games, he was wildly productive when he played. He put up a lot of numbers, 42 doubles. As you said, led the league. He takes a sweeping breaking ball outside. So two men are on. Diekman, one of the 37 pitchers used by Tampa Bay. And when you think that that number was made necessary in part because they lost three-fifths of their starting rotation. Including Jeffrey Springs, Peter Fairbanks told me if Jeffrey Springs hadn't gotten hurt, he would have won the Cy Young this year. And Shane McClanahan had a, was in the lead for the Cy Young at one point, and he went down also. And they also lost Drew Rasmussen. Yeah, and how good he has been, especially postseason pitching. And it's, it's incredible to think what they've been able to piece together. Of course, it's Tampa Bay. It's what they're known for. I think Zach Eflin's been huge. To be he will start tomorrow for Tampa Bay in game two. I mean, Nathan Avaldi for Texas. Grossman, a switch hitter, batting from the right for the first time today. 0 for 3 with a walk from the left. Grossman, a switch hitter, much better from the right side. Two hole with two men on and one out. And it's Oles Garcia on deck. Given the state of the Rangers bullpen, if you're a Ranger fan, they just cannot put up enough runs. The bigger the lead, the better. That bullpen had a 477 ERA and allowed 85 homers this year. Those are huge numbers. Uh, Dickman threw a fastball by Grossman. So two outs, and here's Kevin. All right, Sean, top two. Twins up 2-0 on a Royce Lewis home run. Alejandro Kirk to center field. But check out the 2021 Gold Glove winner, Michael Taylor, take one away. Kevin Gosman's in a jam right now over on ESPN. Sean, it's 2-0. All right, Kevin, thank you. Here it's 4-0 Texas. And Diekman just missed. Looked like that nipped the strike zone. He didn't get the call. Garcia, one for four, an infield single. He reached on an error by Tyler Walls, the shortstop, back in the third. Four runs, eight hits, and an error for Texas. They've left 10, 0, 6, and 4 for Tampa Bay. They've stranded six. A slicing foul ball evens the count at 1 and 1. Bruce Bochy, Mike Maddox is pitching coach. 
They do have action out there, but they got to bring Montgomery back out, don't they? Well, I certainly would. Rolls Chapman's up. But Swing and a miss at a 97 mile an hour fastball away. Get a lot of chase. Fastball up and away to these righties. Up and away, two and two. Evan Carter, the runner at second, and Corey Seager at first. They have Chapman warming up. He and Jose Leclerc now have become the eighth and ninth inning guys. Sometimes it just depends on what the opposing team's the batting order looks like, who pitches the eighth or the ninth. Deepman struck him out, 97 again. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Doesn't look like Montgomery's coming back out. 4-0 Texas, we're in the middle of the eighth in St. Petersburg. After seven scoreless innings, he had thrown 93 pitches. And he'll make way for the bullpen. It's the veteran, Aroldis Chapman, the 35-year-old from Cuba, facing the top of the order, and Yandy Diaz takes a strike. 58 in the third innings, 103 strikeouts for Chapman, and yet, when he gets off with his command, he can get in a lot of trouble, and then he starts throwing that slider way too often. Diaz chops one foul. A lot of postseason experience for Chapman, pitched in seven postseasons prior, and has pitched very well. Matter of fact, among pitchers who've thrown at least 40 innings in the postseason, his strikeout ratio is number one all time 13 and a half <laughs> per nine innings. He was pitching for Kansas City this year. And the Texas bullpen was problematic. They clearly were a playoff contender. They needed to do something. July 1st, they went out and got Chapman from the Royals. 101 <laughs> down and in. Well, I think the biggest key, too, is them using him here. He really can't go back to back days. And so this takes him out of the equation for tomorrow, but shows you how much they lean on just a few pitchers in this bullpen that they trust. Again, late, it's DeVores, Chapman, LeClerc. Those are the, the guys who still have something left in the tank because a few of those relievers got pretty gassed with a lot of work and necessary work to get them to this point. And on the feet of Yandy Diaz, who, in addition to being the batting champion has a very good eye walks a lot seventh pitch of the at bat upcoming. And there will be an eighth with a Rosa Reina scheduled to follow and then Harold Ramirez. Montgomery pitched seven innings, the scoreless ball out six hits. Routine chopper right to Seeger at shortstop, one out. Montgomery did not walk a man, he struck out five. He's just the seventh Ranger pitcher in postseason history to throw seven scoreless innings. In a game, Derek Holland, Eight and a third scoreless in the 2011 World Series against the Cardinals. Cliff Lee, eight innings in the ALCS to 2010 against the Yankees. Sean, I don't know if we see that from any other starting pitchers when we look at the wild card series. All the other teams, and a lot of that's the bullpen, so they needed Montgomery to go deep. 
Yeah, so Rose Duran is really interesting. When he does his pregame report on the pitcher, he only wants to know how hard does he throw. That's all he wants to know. He doesn't want to know location, spin rate, anything else. He just goes, how hard does he throw? And that's his entire scouting report. <laughs> Well, this guy throws hard. He's going to yeah. throw it by him for strike three. 101 from Aroldis Chapman. And this is arm side. I mean, just to see that late movement, and that's his sinker. He's got his four seam. He'll throw a little bit more, but it's been the sinker. Hitters just hitting 091 against it. In fact, he's the best in all of baseball. Average against, slug against, whiff percentage on that pitch. It really doesn't seem fair you can sink it at 101 miles an hour, but that's what he can do. Sean, when we started covering baseball a million years ago, you throw a sinker at, you know, 83 miles an hour. Now they're over 100. Wow. Really awkward swing by Harold Ramirez, who's 0 for 3. And when you're gearing up for 101, it's hard to pick up mm. 91. He's thrown seven straight strikes. Another defensive swing. Slow chopper to Seeger. Has to hurry. And he got Ramirez by a step. Tampa Bay went in order. We go to the ninth. We'll be back after this word from our ABC stations. Back in the beautiful Tampa Bay area. How about this lineup? Talk about beautiful Saturday at noon. Undefeated Oklahoma, undefeated Texas in the All-State Red River rivalry. Monday Night Football is the Packers and the Raiders. Then we'll have the triple header to open the NHL series. A season starting on Tuesday. Pre-game coverage at 5. Blackhawks Penguins. The debut of Connor Bedard. Followed by a Kraken and Golden Knights. By the way, Kentucky at Georgia football Saturday night at 7 on ESPN. Who's doing that game? Yeah. I, I don't know. Is there any vested interest there? Andrew Kittredge, the new pitcher, his first pitch is tapped right back to him by Nate Lowe. So here's Kittredge, who didn't see a lot of action this year. He was recovering from Tommy John surgery, which he had in June a year ago. It was activated in mid-August. Got into 14 games for the Rays. Pitched very well. And they left a couple of pretty good pitchers off of this roster, showing the depth. Kevin Kelly not on the roster, and he had a pretty good year. That was a hard omission. Heim took a strike. Jake Diekman pitched a scoreless inning. Struck out two, gave up a hit and a walk. Kittredge is the fourth raised pitcher and he missed outside he's 33 years old from Spokane Washington Jonah Heim became a switch hitter his sophomore year in high school he told me he said I just got bored of hitting right handed and I said all right I'm left handed too so just showed up one day and told the coach I'm hitting left handed now and he said all right go ahead and now he's pretty good switch hitter in the big leagues 95 RBIs. Eddie Murray became a switch hitter at double A. He, his manager told him, why don't you try hitting left handed tonight? So he goes up for the first time, never at left handed in a game in his life, at two hits in a double A game. He's been a switch hitter, was a switch hitter ever since. It's amazing how guys. Was he struck? I mean, why did the manager tell him to do that? Was he having a tough time? No, he was so good. He said, I think you can hit left handed also. So Eddie said, all right, I'll try it. Wait, got two hits. Good advice. Heim has struck out, singled, walked, and grounded out. He takes a breaking ball down and in. So Tony Clark, the head of the Players Association, became a switch hitter because he was so much bigger and better than all the kids at age 10. They wouldn't let him hit right-handed. They said, <laughs> you have to hit left-handed. That's how he became a switch hitter. Still two and two on Heim. Leody Tavares on deck. And they do have Jose Leclerc warming up. I think the Rays might be happy to see Chapman depart after just facing three batters. In the air and left, and backing up is Rosa Reina for the second out. In the bottom of the ninth inning, probably against the right-hander, Leclerc. Isak Paredes 
Curtis Mead and Manuel Margot and I would assume we would see Josh Lowe off the bench at some point left handed bat. Tavares rounded up the middle backhanded by me didn't have a lot on the throw and he's safe my goodness the four errors really don't even begin to tell the story there's so many other plays they just didn't make that looked like they were relatively routine plays including that one there's just not a lot on the throw and meet his best position is third base but he's forced to play second base today he doesn't have a very strong arm he's got kind of clunky feet too but again this is not the infield that the Rays thought they'd have in the first game of the playoffs was Brandon Lau out for the postseason fractured his kneecap following a ball off his knee Wander Franco on administrative leave that would have been their defense up the middle ball one on Josh Young go for three with a sacrifice fly in his first postseason game Kittredge throws a strike yeah, he broke his left thumb he showed me his left thumb today it's still swollen up way bigger than his right and he's still trying to hit it's healed but it really is it hurts a lot and as a hitter I got to think that affects you hands. all the time you mess with your hands or your fingers Ugh. hands are everything That's where it all begins the runner goes swing and a miss throw to second and it doesn't matter as it was strike three on Young to end the inning. So that could be a little more comfortable for Texas. They've left 13 men on base. A lot of work to do for the homestanding Rays. Down four to nothing as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Kevin Connors in studio. The Royce Lewis experience is in full swing here in the postseason. Homered in his first playoff at bat in the first. Homers in his second playoff at bat in the third. Pablo Lopez, three no-hit innings, three-nothing twins. Sean on ESPN. All right, Kevin, thank you. Here we go to the bottom of the ninth in the first game of this postseason. Jose LeClerc on to try to close it out for Texas, pitching with a four-nothing lead. And he throws the breaking ball for strike one. LeClerc has had a very good year just four saves we mentioned Will Smith was their closer most of the year he had 22 saves so the clerk was the closer supposed to be the closer coming out of spring training but he hurt his neck now he's healed and he's gotten a lot of big outs for them down the stretch and you're right Sean 57 innings 37 hits allowed 268 ERA Paredes checks the swing they appealed down the first no swing and with Chapman's struggles, he has definitely been the guy. He's been the one that's most trusted for Bruce Bochy to go to, whether it's a high leverage or in here to close out a game. Paredes 0 for 1 in his career against LeClerc. That's a nasty pitch. 97 on the corner. Chapman pitched a 1, 2, 3, 8th inning. It's rare that he goes more than one inning. Clerk's best pitch is his slider. Throws that. 31% of the time league hit 119 no homers off the slider this year set up to throw it right here his first postseason game at age 29 out of the Dominican Republic and he missed outside Jonathan Aranda is in the on deck circle to hit for Curtis Mead. Leclerc doesn't want to walk the leadoff man with a four run lead. So he threw one over the heart of the plate and it was popped up. Uh, Half hearted swing by Paredes. Seeger caught it, one out. Paredes, one for four. Here are the scheduled starters for tomorrow Nathan Avaldi. 12 and 5 during the regular season against Zach Eflin, who was their best starting pitcher. As a matter of fact, tied Chris Bassett of the Blue Jays for the league lead and wins. Best one who made it all the way to the end of the year. You said earlier, Springs, McClanahan pitched very well before getting hurt. Here's Aranda. 
Fouls one off the catcher. He got into 34 regular season games. Again, several of these players wouldn't even be here if they had a healthy team. 234 Aranda. And Josh Lowe has moved into the on deck circle. He would hit for Manuel Margot. Change up. See that all the time, too. <laughs> Used to throw your change up 78. Now we throw it 90 and above. Certainly doesn't look like he's stressed about pitching in his first career postseason game. <laughs> Serene look on his face as he misses up and away. I wouldn't be stressed either if I could throw a sinker 97 miles an hour for a strike. Another guy who's battled a lot of injuries over the years. That's just nasty. Change up down and away, and Aranda didn't come close. And the Rays are down to their final out. Four pitches he throws. This is the one he throws the last course, throws it a lot more to lefties about half the time. And you see just the chase. And we've seen a ton of chase from these Rays hitters. Here's Josh Lowe's had an excellent year 292 with 20 homers. He had 32 stolen bases as well. Trying to keep the Rays alive. Took a ball up and away. Outside, Rangers one out away from their fourth shutout in postseason history. The last one was game four of the 2011 World Series against the Cardinals. The ball outside. The Rays about to be shut out unless this changes for the fourth time of the postseason, including in back to back games. Jim mentioned it earlier the one nothing extra inning loss to the Guardians last year and Lowe takes all the way it's ball four a four pitch walk that is the first walk given up by a Rangers pitcher today it has been a beautifully pitched game here's Taylor Walls Already with two hits today, a couple of singles and a ground out in between. And he took a first pitch fastball right down the middle. Hold on. Just a little bit outside. Texas pitching staff had 13 shutouts during the regular season. Was any concern about their readiness to go play after the disappointment of the weekend? It looked like they pretty much had the division locked up and then didn't win it. Uh, those questions were erased early. They came out ready to go, and it's been Tampa Bay that has been off. They're not holding low at first. Pretty well hit, but that should end the ball game. Tavares the catch and game one of this wild card series goes to the Texas Rangers. A combined six hitter for Montgomery who pitched the first seven and then Chapman and LeClerc with an inning each. Jordan Montgomery setting the tone for this Rangers team. We've talked so much about the bullpen. They only had to use two guys because of those seven innings pitched. He threw 93 pitches. 61 of them were strikes. At the five strikeouts, no walks, no runs, and just the six hits. 
And this is where the this is what the Rangers have done all year. Just when things look bad, they figure it out because Bruce Bochy makes sure no one ever panics on this team. They lost eight games in a row and 20 out of 30, and he kept it together. And instead of panicking about this, they said, all right, we're just going to go in and win. And they played awfully well today. For a while, when they started a tumble, it looked like they might not make the playoffs at all. And yet they rally back. He gives the players credit, said he has a lot of players in the core, guys like Corey Seeger and others, who are pretty even keeled, don't get too high or too low. And the Devil Rays have to wonder what that was all about. Four errors, it could have been more than that. And numbers can be deceiving. Tyler Glass now gave up three earned runs in five plus innings. And his career ERA through 10 postseason starts is 5.72. That is the third highest ERA among pitchers with at least 10 career postseason starts of all time. Well, you look at this game, too. I mean, the fact that Texas only scored the four runs, they left 13 runners on base. Talk about the four errors. They were given a lot of base runners. Here is Coley Harvey. Corey, you guys were able to take advantage of some of those miscues that Tampa Bay had, four errors for them today. Yep. How were you guys able to do that on a basis? Um, you know, you have to, especially going up against a guy like Glass now. You know, he's really good. He uh, he competed all day long, and um, unfortunately, we did take advantage of the mistakes they made and, and got the win. Uh, speaking of pitchers, your pitcher, Jordan Montgomery, was sharp. He's had, uh, of his last five starts, three scoreless outings, another one today. What was working so well from your vantage point of short? Um, I think he kind of had everything. You know, he had them all balance he was in and out he had a good change up today but he was just really impressive you know uh, to be able to come out here and shut that lineup down at home it, it's a uh, it speaks to what he's been able to do now there was a lot made of the travel that you guys had to take all the way from Seattle just a couple of days ago the way the season ended but it seemed like there was a lot of life in the dugout just from my vantage point what what allowed that to happen for you guys yeah absolutely you know there's no excuses um, we punched our ticket that's all we were looking for and now we're here so you got to come out and play good baseball what do we expect to see from you guys tomorrow? Um, just going to come out and try and get another win. You know, there, there's nothing more than that. All right. Thanks very much, Corey. Back to you guys. Well, they were in first place for 160 days. Didn't win the division, but it didn't matter today. In the wild card round, they defeat the Tampa Bay Rays 4 to nothing, And they'll have a chance to wrap up this series tomorrow right back here on ABC at 3 o'clock. And if they do, they'll move on to take on the number one seed, the Baltimore Orioles. Well, it was 160 days in first place, the fourth most for any team all time that did not finish the season on top of its division. Didn't matter today. We got a lot of help from the Rays. Final score, Texas 4, Tampa Bay, nothing. Wild, sorry, wild card series continue tonight at 7 p.m. on ESPN through the Diamondbacks and the Brewers. For Jessica Mendoza, Tim Kirch, and Coley Hart. Sean McDonough, so long from St. Petersburg. We'll join the studio after a break.